In this section, we're going to take a look at the relationship between the forward bow of the neck and bridge height, and how these two things work together, how they're interconnected, and how they affect the playability and the tone of the guitar. So, just briefly, um, I want to show you here what I'm talking about. And basically, we're just talking about how much forward bow is here, how much is this neck bending forward. We control that with the truss rod. Um, we can control how much we let it bow under the tension of the strings or how straight we make it. And then also the height of the bridge, which, you know, obviously on an arch top, a typical traditionally made arch top will have thumb wheels to make it easy to adjust the bridge height. Nylon string and classical string, you're going to have to actually, you know, sand down the bridge or even make a new, I mean, not sand down the bridge, sand down the saddle or even make a new saddle if you need to raise it. So, um, to illustrate what I want to talk about here, let me show you a slide. And if you look at the uh, top picture, or the top illustration in the slide, you'll see that there is an extreme amount of forward bow in the neck of this drawing here, of this guitar in this drawing. And you'll see that because of that forward bow, it has greatly increased the amount of distance between the top of fret 12 and the bottom of the string. And um, if you look at the bottom picture, you'll see that with a straight neck, it completely lowers the uh, string closer to the fret at fret 12. So we're actually just using the bow of the neck to change the distance between the fret and the string at fret 12. And so what this means is that if our guitar is set up correctly, um, let's say that we have two thousand or uh, two thirty seconds of an inch distance, which is kind of standard for an acoustic guitar, uh, between fret twelve and the bottom of our strings. Let's just say for this example, all the way across, all the strings are the same. And let's say that I'm uh, that I feel there's too much forward bow in the neck. Well, what will happen is if I straighten this neck it's going to lower my action even further at the 12th fret and that's probably going to get a little too low and cause some string buzz. So what's going to have to happen is every time I change the neck, if I straighten the neck, I'm going to have to raise the bridge in order to remain constant at fret 12. And also the obvious would be true if I lower the bridge, I'm going to have to increase the bow of the neck to remain constant at fret 12. And these two variables, the way they interact like that, can be useful because, um, you know, when you're designing your guitar, you may just use your neck angle to determine the angle that the string is approaching the bridge for whatever desired tonal outcome uh, you may have. But if it's on a, a finished guitar, um, you can really fine tune things by playing with these two different variables. And the reason why it makes a big difference is because every time we raise the bridge, we increase the amount of string tension, our string energy, our force that's being applied to the top. And that can change the tonality of the guitar and obviously more tension and force could, can make more volume um, and things like that as well. I find typically that if the bridge gets lowered too much, the guitar gets shifted into like an unfocused, bass-heavy sort of a sound. And um, so we want to find, uh, and obviously the other end of the spectrum would be a muted, choked, overly tight sort of sound with a bridge that's really, really high. And on that side of the spectrum, uh, you get into structural problems too, because by that point you are putting too much downward pressure on the top and you may be causing structural issues or risking structural issues long term. Um, so those are things to keep in mind there. But what we want to do when we're setting up our guitars, we want to find that perfect balance where we have the right amount of forward bow and the right height to get the best tone and the best playability and there's a bit of a compromise there. And uh, one other thing I would like to add too is um, you know we looked at the shape of the neck, the ideal perfect shape of the neck and all these things. Um, and we looked at a lot of different theoretical uh, points. And 
the theory and the math and all these other things are, are amazing tools for analysis and teaching and uh, sometimes problem solving and all these types of things. But at the end of the day, if you're adjusting your guitar and it sounds better when the neck is perfectly straight, you go with what sounds better. Uh, the real world, you know, what you're discovering on your guitar, like what you're sensing as you're working through these variables, is always going to be the supreme guideline. So the theory goes out the window if it's conflicting with what you're sensing in the real world. So keep that in mind too, and don't be too rigid on uh, these things that we're talking about. Although they are very important and 99% of the time uh, they're going to be a good guide for you, but they're not always going to be uh, a rigid set in stone law that you have to abide by. But uh, so, so always go with your instinct um, and, and follow your intuition that you're sensing here and in your hands and in your ears while you're working. So um, that's the relationship between those. And um, in the next section, we will uh, look a little deeper at setting up the guitar.